Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and on today's video, Getting to Know Eclipse Part 11, Navigating Note Files, I'm going to show you everything that you can do with a note file open. There are several ways to open note files in Eclipse. The first way, if you do have a notes icon on your toolbar, you can press the notes button and select whatever note file you'd like to open and press OK. Additionally, you can always go to production, open notes, or press shift F7 as a default keystroke to open your notes list. After the notes list is open, you can select your note file and press OK to open it. And additionally, you can select your file from the file manager, press the plus sign, select the note file, and hit open to open the note file. Whichever way you're comfortable with is fine. I'm going to go to production, open notes, and I'll open up my note file. Once I'm in the note file, you see that it's made up of several parts. On the left is every steno stroke that I wrote during this job on my steno machine. You see at the bottom, it tells me what stroke I have highlighted and what fold that stroke is found in. To the right of the steno are the time codes. There are two types of time codes listed for every stroke. The first time code is the absolute time code. Absolute time codes represent the time of day that each stroke was written on your steno machine. This time comes from the time on your computer. The next set of time codes are the relative time codes. Relative time codes are created as if your job is being timed by a stopwatch. The next column is the relative time codes. Relative time codes count up from zero when you begin the job, and each stroke is assigned a relative time code that represents how long after you started the job it was stroked. So relative time codes accrue pretty much the same way a stopwatch does. Starts at zero and just keeps counting. Whereas the absolute time codes on the left represent the true time of day that the stroke was struck. To the right of the time codes is the translation of each stroke. By default, it's set to phonetic translations. However, there are several ways that you can change the display. On the left, you see that number 7 or Alt-M will turn on translate mode. However, I can also right click and choose translate mode. Once I turn on translate mode, all of the entries from this note file that also exist in my main dictionary translate into the main dictionary entry. You see that I have a slop stroke, a speaker, some auto-include files, as well as some untranslates. From within the note file, there are several actions you can take. One of the most important is that you can global, and you can global the same way that you global within a regular document. If I press Control G, a global for the single stroke comes up, and in the drop-down list, I can choose my main dictionary, job dictionary, or any of the other regular global options. If I keep hitting Control G, I can select multiple strokes, or if I'm a hyper key user, I can press Alt-7 to select two strokes, Alt-8 to select three strokes, and Alt-9 to select four strokes, so that I can global this on Translate if I desire. In addition to globaling in the note file, there are also some other options available. You see that on the left there are options like Find, Go To, and Append. However, if I right click, you see that I also get a lot of these same options. I have Go To, Global, Read, Write, Import, Find, Locate Next and Previous, Font, and Translate Mode. And like I said, Translate Mode simply turns on and off your English translations for each stroke. If I right click and select Go To or select Go To from the info bar, I can select the stroke number I want to jump to or the fold number. Additionally, I can specify the fold size. The default settings reflect what you would see on paper notes. I can highlight this and type in a stroke number, such as 1000, and press OK. And I'm taken to stroke number 1000. And you see that at the bottom, my stroke count has updated to 1000. And it also tells me what fold I'm on. I can right click again, and we already went over the globaling options. However, I can also read, which will allow me to merge two note files together. If I select another note file, it will merge it to the end of this note file. 
I can also right click and write. If I highlight some strokes, I can right click and write or press Alt W and create a new note file with just those highlighted strokes. And again, if I go to the end, I can right click and read or I can press Alt R and select the new note file to add that section of notes to the end of the existing note file. Those options work the same way that they do in Eclipse files, it's simply Alt W and Alt R. When I right click, I also get the option to import, which will allow me to import other types of files besides just Eclipse note files. I'll be able to import notes from ASCII format, rich text format, or old Eclipse DOS files. The right click import function is the same as the file import function. Much like the block read and block write functions are the same as read and write when you right click. The next function is find and locate next and previous. I can click on find or just like when I'm editing a document, I can press F5 and choose the steno that I'd like to search for. I've put in my answer bank and I'll press OK. And it takes me to the next answer bank that it found. And if I right click and choose locate next, it takes me to the next one. And if I right click and choose locate previous, it takes me again to the previous answer. These options are the same as hitting control L to find next, control L, or shift control L to find previous. Those keystrokes will also work within your note file. The last option within note files is the font option. This simply allows you to customize the font that you read your note files in. In this font window, only monospaced fonts will be available, so not every font on your computer is going to be in this list. But you can choose any font from this list to view your note files in. For instance, I can change from Lucida Console to Consolus, which is a little bit narrower, and I can make it larger. And so by using the font button, you can make your note file as easy to read as necessary. You can choose bold, regular, italic, or bold, italic for most fonts. Whichever font you'd like to view your notes in should work as long as it's available in the font list. And any monospace font should be available in this list. If you install any extra fonts that are monospaced, they should show up in this list once you reopen it. And these settings will persist. Once I change the font that I view my note files in, that's how I'll view my note files in this user until I change it again. As a reminder, Advantage Software offers anytime support 24-7. Please feel free to contact tech support with any Eclipse-related questions at 772-288-3266. Tech support can be reached anytime, including weekends and holidays. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you'll be notified when we publish new content in the future. Thanks so much and have a great day!